Hi guys, Angie Bell with My Fairy Treasures. Okay, let me come out a little bit here. There we go. Make sure you guys can see. Okay, you guys, what I'm going to do is, um, I did a video, my last video, I did a bunch of prints on my new 11 by 17 homemade jelly plate. So, um, make sure you watch that video of how to make a 11 by 17 jelly plate um, for pennies. Okay, so I made these prints, but some of them, um, I wanted to add a little bit to them. So I wanted to show you how to take your prints, your jelly prints to a whole new level. So, um, this one right here, I love it. I really, really love it, but I think it could even be better. For one, I need to just, just a little bit with my Tim Holtz Distress inks or oxides, these things, okay? Just improve them a little bit by just, it's a little white, right? So I can take a little bit of anything. I'll take some vintage photo. Let me see. I have other color. I have a lot of colors. <clears throat> I have an antique linen, which we might just need that. We might not even need to go as dark as um, vintage photo. We'll see. Let me see what else I have. I have a one called Old Paper. Okay, and then I have corduroy and pill paint. I have a I'm just putting all these out. And I have two antique linen, so I need to put this away. So I have backup. All right. Let me grab. This is what I like to use for my, um, and this is just some of them. I have a ton of them. These are what I like to use for um, these kind of makeup brushes right here. You can get them at Dollar Tree. They look like black when you get them at Dollar Tree. So... And I kind of usually try to label them like this is sepia, this one's walnut stain. This one doesn't have anything on it, so we'll use this one. They're great for your Timmel's Distress inks or oxides. They're great for um, the Pan Pastels or the um, Jane Davenport Pastels or any pastel. Um, I want to use both of these. Let's try using, I'm going to use the uh, Antique Linen first. I'm just curious of what it does. I haven't used it very much. Okay. So it beiges it out a little bit more. I want it to be more than that. But I'm glad because I haven't used the antique linen very much. And I have and I haven't used the old paper very much either. Let's see what old paper does. Well, you know what? This you know what? I'm liking this. Let's use a mixture of the old paper and the antique linen over all the white areas. Because it just gives it that it just pushes the white back a little bit. I'm using mostly the old paper. It just yellow, it kind of gives, yellows the paper out a little bit. And then I am going to use some Tim Holtz Distress ink still too. You know what, I, sh I should get my glass mat out because I don't want to do this on my desk. I usually always have my glass mat out, but I was, I don't know what I was doing. I was doing something where I couldn't have this on here. Anyway, there we go. All right, let's take some of the uh, vintage photo. Back with this one. And um, let's just add a little brown into this. If I have my vintage photo on these. Here's vintage photo. Let me get this up here. This is for walnut stain. Kind of like to try to keep them with where they belong. So let's use my vintage photo one. And just go in here and muck up a little bit. <clears throat> so between this and the coffee staining you can really just um go in and just take them up to the next level a little bit In the corner, I'm really gonna brown that out right there. And 
And I'm going to go a little deeper. I'm going to go with walnut stain to the edges of this paper because I love walnut stain for that. It's really a kind of a dirty color. It looks like, you know, it gives you a dirt look. I have walnut ink and walnut oxides. The oxides you add with water. Well, either one you can add with water, but it gives that this oxidation, which is really cool. I'm going to turn my paper around. And I just want to muck up the edges a little bit more. I have another one called a uh, corduroy, and that one's a real good one for mucking up too. For lack of a better word, <laughs> I'm all mucking. Get yourself these brushes at Dollar Tree. They don't always have them. I think they have them right now. Um, I think they're the best thing for these distress these um, distress um, inks for any inks really or pastels I think they're fabulous okay so check this out now you know actually I'm gonna take a little bit of this mucky that up a little bit more and then add a little bit more muck to over the walnut stain okay I like it as I keep adding more. I like to work fast. You guys probably noticed about me. So you can work really fast with, um, you can work really fast with these makeup applica applicators, however they are. For foundation, I think they're for. I've never liked those for foundation, but I sure like them for my art. Okay, so look how much how much better that looks. It just brings everything together. Isn't that cool? And I was going to throw some coffee stain over this, but just by using the um, the uh, inks, the Distress inks, I don't need to. So I'm going to leave this one alone. This one we're going to call Done. Okay. <clears throat> Let me look and see. See, this one I absolutely love. Let me put it down here like this. I absolutely love. I'll come up a little closer. I just think there's a little bit too much white showing up through here a little bit. So, um, let's add some. Yeah, let's do something different. Uh, let's add some rusty hinges. I'm probably going to have to get my other one because it has my all my other ones. Let me get them. See, I have a whole other one that says of these. I buy, I buy them by the truckloads. The next time I see them, I'm going to buy some more just because um, I used to have a lot of extras, but I don't have a lot of extras now. Because whenever I get new colors of the Tim Holtz Distress Inks or any pastels, I need it. Okay, see, I labeled it Rusty Hinges. Okay. And I think this is only, this is a ink, not an oxide. It doesn't matter. I use the oxide and the inks both. Whether I'm going to wet them or not, I use them both. Because if you wet the um, inks, they give a distressed look. If you wet the oxides, they give a distressed, but an oxide, like it, uh, it gives an ox, it goes, looks like it went through an oxidation process. <clears throat> Tim Holtz stuff is just phenomenal. Everyone loves Tim Holtz and Tim Holtz products. All right, now look at the difference. Look at the difference over here now. You just filled it in a little bit and it just adds that extra. This is fabulous. This is gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, photograph, I'm gonna make this into a printable. 
for the for our kit. So I love that. Okay, this one. Um, just a second, you guys. I'm just kind of straightening out my desk a second. I got way too much crap out. I'm just gonna touch up the sides here and here and this one little spot here. I'm gonna keep my rusty hinges out. Rusty hinges looks like that. Rusty hinges is one of my favorites because I love rust. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, shocker. I'm, I, mean, I could possibly just tear off that white edge anyway. I probably would, but. Oh, we got these out. Let's just do it. This is another one I'm going to probably, I'm going to put in my um, printables packet next month. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll probably end up tearing that white off anyway, but it just fixes it up a little bit more. So this one's pretty much already perfect perfectly imperfect. I don't like anything perfect. Okay. This one here, I love too. This is that, um, this is that, um, both of these are the, uh, bath mat from Dollar Tree and I just love it. And I love the colors. Uh, we need something deeper here. So we're going to go with, um, walnut stain. This is what the top of the walnut stain looks like. Most people know. Most people have been using Tim Holtz Distress Inks or Oxides forever, but just in case. <clears throat> I like to try to explain things because, you know what? There's always new people getting into um, mixed media, into crafting, into arting. And I remember when I first started getting into it, there's all these different products that people were saying. And they would just say them I and mean, go over them really quickly. And um, I'd be like, okay, what's that? And where do you get it? And how much is it? So I guess as creators, we can't assume everybody knows. Even if a product's been around forever, there's always new people coming in to mixed media, to crafting, to arting, the whole thing. So I love walnut stain. That's another one of my favorites because it just it's deeper than vintage photo. If you when you need something deeper, and I needed something deeper, so this is fabulous. All right, see what I did to those edges? How that just I don't know. It just blended everything. Look at the bottom now. So if I want to use the bottom, that looks cool. This looks like a part of the design now. Now I can just use that. So this whole thing is really usable. Love it. Okay. So those three are done. <coughs> okay, this one here. Um, I just love how this looks. But you know what I think? Coffee. I think coffee needs to happen to this. There's so much white space on the edges. I think if that was all coffee stained, that could look really cool. So let's get our coffee out. Um, when I made my video yesterday, I told you I got this idea from Rob McClendon to make, um, to make it put it in a spray bottle and just be able to coffee stain at your, um, at your, in your, um, at your desk instead of having to go to the kitchen. So what this is, is, um, the instant coffee from uh, Dollar Tree. So to make it really strong, let's just say you do it by a measuring cup, half cup of the, of the instant coffee and a half a cup of water preferably distilled or bottled water. Um, and then I didn't tell you guys yesterday, but I put it in the directions, add a little alcohol. It's like cooking, just, you know, pour some alcohol in there as a preservative. So this can sit at your desk and not be, um, won't spoil. Now, if you want to make it lighter, you could do like, um, two thirds, uh, you could do like, um, like an, on a measuring cup, maybe do two thirds of coffee and the rest with, and the rest of the cup with water. So, and that will get you so that it's not, or maybe, I would say maybe this, 
yeah, maybe two thirds of coffee and then do the rest with water for more of a medium. This is dark and I use the dark most of the time. And I like how it just goes on kind of messy like that. Okay. <clears throat> Let that soak for a second. And you know, let's do a second one because I wanted to get do this one too. This one right here, see the gray? I love coffee on top of the gray. It does something to it. And here too. And then just let it drip along the whole thing. So we're going to do that to this one too. Um, let me move these papers out of the way. And we can work on two of these at the same time. Let's move this over. Let me get a paper towel. And then what's cool, the paper towel you use can also be used in your work. Because now we're staining the towel too, right? And I feel you guys like the instant coffee is better than using like a cup of the coffee that you make in your percolator because um, it, you can make it stronger. Um, and it seems like it's just a stronger color than instant coffee is. It's probably some type of chemicals. Lord only knows what it is. Um, so I'm just going to, oh, you know what? I'm spraying my, my ink pads. I don't want to do that. Okay. It probably wouldn't hurt my ink pads, but still. So I'm getting that gray good. Let me just drop my ink pads. I mean, they'll probably be fine because the lids are on them, but still, let's not spray the ink pads. Okay. <clears throat> so now... I'm going to go over this one just so it drips on this. Perfect. Now see how that looks? So we're going to let that dry. That's going to be fabulous. So let me throw this on the ground. And then this one. Let's let this one drip. I love the dripping. The dripping is what really adds to it check that out look at all the drips and everything so when that dries I think it's gonna be fabulous and then if I need to add any Tim Holtz distress inks I'll add them then afterwards if we need to you know what I want to try is if I want to add any ink add ink and then spray it with the coffee because then you're gonna um you're gonna make things either um look more distressed or oxidize so maybe we'll do that here on the next one well we'll do it on this one um, I'm loving the whole thing, but the gray needs some, some brown in it, right? And then I love this. So, let's add some walnut stain. Wait. What do I have? Hmm. I thought I had some walnut stain that was an oxide. Oh, I do. See this one, I have, a wall, I have a regular walnut stain ink, and then I have an oxide. And I want it to, um, they both react with water, but this one starts the oxidation. So, let's start the oxidation with coffee. Now we're, now we're cooking with grease. We're mixing things up. Okay. So I just want to throw a little bit of brown in, around in here. Just mucking this up a little bit and maybe not too much mucking because we're going to also muck it up with coffee, right? But where we muck up, I want to really get some good amount of mucking up on this so we can really see the reaction with the, um, with the coffee hitting this oxidation part. So that's why I'm really going kind of deep with this in the areas that we're doing it in. Okay. Okay. 
So let's take the coffee again. Let it sit there for a second. So it's mixing with the Tim Holtz Distress. So I've never mixed coffee with the Distress Oxide or the Distress Inks. So I think we're gonna get some cool effects. You're gonna get some different effects, that's for sure. So look how cool that looks. I can't wait to see how it dries. So as it dries, the um, Tim Holtz ink, it um, just oxidizes more and more as it dries. Okay. And I'll try to have some pictures um, at the end so you guys can see some of these dried. Okay. Um, next. Let's do this one. Um... This one's cool. This one has a whole lot of white area that I just want to, I want a coffee dye, obviously. But again, I want to play around with the oxides or the inks on here. So, okay, there's this color and I love it. You guys, this is the most beautiful color and I never heard anyone talk about it. It's called Age Mahogany. <gasps> oh, it's, you know, those fall colors that I like, those jewel, fall, those fall colors, those jewel tone fall colors. So let me see if I can find a, um, thing for it. I don't know if I have one. I'm sure I do. Antique. Okay, I don't think I have one for the age mahogany. For the uh, age mahogany. Anyway, I have a nice lot of a lot of white space to deal with. So let's throw some age mahogany in here. We'll intermix that with some. Um, Vintage photo and maybe some walnut stain. We'll kind of mix things up a little bit. But let me show you how beautiful this color is. I'll bring it up to you guys in just a second. Let me put it in a few places. Um, Hobby Lobby is having their clearance. They haven't started clearancing out the Tim Holtz stuff yet. That always goes really quickly. I've caught it the last two years at my Hobby Lobby that's close by me. And I have cleaned house. Um, so, um, be paying attention because any week now or any day now, they'll be, they'll be clearancing out the Tim Holtz stuff. And you can get a bunch of distress oxides for like a dollar twenty, dollar twenty five, something like that. So... Okay, so the aged mahogany, look how cool it looks. Isn't that pretty? It is a gorgeous color. And I don't see people using it enough. I remember I let it sit there forever. And one day I said, what does this color look like? But I'm so used to using vintage photo, walnut stain, the rust color. You got to experiment with some of your other ones. This one, if you have any turquoise on your, or you want something to look like a rusted turquoise, like, like, like when um, pipes rust, this cracked pistachio is excellent. If you see it, get it this year. Last year, nobody was buying this because the packaging looks ugly. It does not look like that. It looks like when pipes, um, when pipes um, oxide, they get, they get that rust color. They get this greenish. They get this turquoisey color. It's fabulous. I picked up five of those last year because nobody was picking them up. And I went home and I tested. And I went, oh, this is fabulous. People don't know about this. So... Okay, so I want to also add some vintage photo and some walnut stain to this. <clears throat> that goes there. Where's the okay? Sepia will use that one. Okay, <clears throat> we'll throw some vintage photo in here. 
Is this an oxide or a... Yeah, this is an oxide. Again, I have both. I have the oxide and the... If you, if you have to make a decision of which one you want to get, I would go with all the oxides. The Distress inks just look more Distress, which is cool. But the oxides oxidize. So you get the Distress look and the oxidation. So... I just think they're, I just think they're even more cool. <clears throat> That's if you have to make a decision. If not, get both. Okay. So that's enough vintage photo because I also want to throw in um, walnut stain, which I call the dirt. You know what else I have? I think I have, what the heck happened to it? I don't know where it's at. There's another one that's called corduroy, and I wanted to use it because I don't use it very often. It's another one that gives a really good dirt stain look. I, I don't. It must be over my drawer. I don't feel like looking for that. So anyway, we're good with what we have. <coughs> we are good. So now we're gonna go in with some. <laughs> we're gonna go in with some good dirt. That's how I describe, describe walnut stain. Vintage photo just gives a more vintage look. Walnut stain to me adds the grime, the dirt. Something will make it look way older than it is. That's what I think. This is my little opinion. And this walnut stain is another oxide. But if they're on clearance at um, Hobby Lobby, whether the oxide or the stains, um, and you can, get them both. Because I always mix up stains with the oxides. That gives a whole nother look, right? Mixing up oxide and stains. I don't always add water to promote the oxidation on either one. Um, and this is the first time I've ever done it with coffee, so that's cool. Then I just use them just to stain stuff, you know. So I just do, use them for what you need. Okay, so now I'm going to add coffee to this. I think that's such a cool idea to add coffee to your stress inks. Alright, that's going to probably look super cool. Alright, so there we go. Look how much better that looks. So let me just put this up on the ground and let this dry now. <clears throat> and what's best is to let them dry naturally instead of like forcing them to dry with the blow dryer. I mean, if you have to, you have to. But um, if you can let them dry naturally, because then you let them go through their oxidation process. It's kind of like Tim Holtz Crackle. If you just let it crackle overnight, it goes. It does a lot better than trying to use the dryer. So. My iPad just came on, so I was just looking at what, what's going on on YouTube. Okay. <clears throat> I was thinking with this, just coffee staining. I love that this is kind of more subtle. There's not like a ton of jelly print on here. So let's just do some coffee. And I may hit it with some Tim Holtz Distress afterwards. But, um, let the coffee sit on it for a second. Soak in. I just think we're going to just have such cool effects. People are going to be like, how in the world did she do that? So instead of letting this drip, let's just dab this one just a little bit just so we can, yeah, let's just let it dab and just let it soak and let it just dry like this. Okay. Look how much better that looks now. See? Now you don't have all that white paper. <clears throat> You're going to have all these coffee stains. Oh my God, I have coffee stained paper everywhere. 
See how cool this is getting? My paper towel. Fabulous. All right, what else do we got going on? Which, how much time do we have? Okay, cool. We're only here for 30 minutes. Um, this again, I just want to coffee stain it, I think. I think coffee would just look really cool on this. This one, I think drips is going to look good. So look at that. Cool, huh? All right, let me put this on the ground. And what's weird about the instant coffee is that it's kind of sticky. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's kind of sticky. Once it dries, you're fine. But like right now, my hands get a little bit sticky. It's weird. It's weird. But once it dries, it's fine. It doesn't make your paper sticky. Once it's dry. All right. This is the same thing where I just think I want to add a little bit of coffee. I don't know what the what the coffee's gonna look like on the darker parts, but I'm sure it'll look cool. Okay, so we're gonna put that down on the ground. I wish I had like a little conveyor belt behind me that I could just throw these on the conveyor belt. <laughs> Have to get up every time to throw it on the ground. Okay. Let's see what else we got going on. I want to choose something else that I'm not just throwing coffee on. Um, what do we want to do to this one? This one I thought was so cool. Well, this is another one I just want to throw coffee. Well, I love the way it looks. I don't think I want to do anything to it. You know what? I think I'm going to use this one. I just love the way it looks. I think I'm just going to keep this like this. And this is definitely going to be used in my um, in my printables next month. I may do a plain one, and then I may do one where I add like my um, scripting or my... Um, actually, I'm going to add on my hieroglyphics like you find in caves, like the natives did. I think that's what I'm going to do on that one. So we'll leave that one alone. See this one right here? I think this is a roll-off page. Anyway, we could do a whole lot of little things to this to make it more interesting. Um... I see the aged mahogany on it, so let's do that. Just here and there, just rub that aged mahogany in. Just in spots. Okay. Let's go with a little bit of a rust color. Going with a little bit of rusty hinges. I keep saying this, I've never seen the rusty hinges in the oxide, so I don't know if Tim Holtz did that or not. If I see it, I'm buying it. I don't care if I have to spend the regular price. A lot of times I like to get them on clearance when they clearance them out of Hobby Lobby, but um, 
I love rusty hinges, so I'd like to see if they have rusty. I'm going to look it up and see if he has rusty hinges in the oxide. I'm just going to look that up. And a nice thing, too, is if you want to get yourself a nice collection of these, like I have a pretty nice collection of them, um, and you're not getting them on sale, or you're not getting them on clearance, wait till they go on sale. Um, Michael's has them on sale, like, every other week. So they're, like, $5, and they usually are down to three fifty or something like that. So, and you can start collecting the colors that you like. Look how much more rich this is getting now. Doesn't that look better? I love it. And I love that the text... Um, it's all through. I think this was just a page where I just take my roller um, with my jelly prints and yeah, I roll off on the pages. I think this is just a roll off page. <clears throat> but I love seeing all the print underneath it. And this is, was a, um, you know, the hamburger press. I was pressing that into my jelly plate and I <laughs> put some cuts in my jelly plate. Um, anyway, I can fix it. Um, so yeah, let's make, let's deepen it up a little bit with some, um, let's do some walnut stain in here. I did it to my new 11 by 17 jelly plate. And, um, when I touched it, I'm like, Ooh, it is kind of sharp. So that's why I did it. Um, you, when you're making your own jelly plates, if anything like that happens, you can just, uh, melt it back down in the microwave and then, um, and then just pour it right back into, for me, it's a, I use a, uh, a cookie sheet. Just pour it right back into the cookie sheet. No major. So I'm going to do that today. I was supposed to do it last night, but I'm going to do it today. And I could just leave it. My jelly plate still worked fine yesterday with that, but just, just to take precautions. Okay, so I'm going to go inside of here and just muck things up a little bit with the here and there. Okay. I like that. Oh, here it is. Brushed corduroy. I wanted to use this one, so I'm going to use this one somewhere. This is another good mucky one, like the walnut stain. I'm actually curious to see what that looks like. Let me get a, another brush in here. This is the brush corduroy. Let me show you. It gives even a little bit more deep depth. Look at that. See? I'll do it to all the corners. I remember when I used corduroy, I was like, oh, yes. I'm like, that's even deeper than my walnut stain. And then we'll add just a couple little bits into here, here and there. Okay. And we'll stop. <laughs> so look how cool. Look how it, it darkened the edges even more. And I threw a little bit in the middle too. Look how nice and grungy this page looks. Love it. Okay. We're almost doing all my papers. I wasn't going to do them all, but we're going through them quick. Um, this one is um, a pull-off, um, like the old walls, which I really like. It just needed a little bit more added to it, right? Um, so I'm thinking there's probably enough color, enough color on here. We just need some coffee staining on this. That's what I'm thinking, so let's just do that. Let me let that sit there for just a second. Let me clean up my hands and my little area over here a little bit. Everything that's over here is getting sprayed with the coffee. Okay, let's see if we can set things back a little bit. All right.
yeah, I think that's going to be just what we needed. Because there was a lot of color added on there. A lot, it was looking like an old wall, but it just needed a little extra something, something. And I think it was just coffee. So that's going to look fabulous. Now my paper towel is all coffeeed up, which I'm excited about that. I'm going to use that in my collaging. That's going to look fabulous. It's going to look fabulous. Okay, I only have two more. Three or more, maybe. Okay, this is really cool. I think this has a pull-off to look like old walls. And I kind of just like the way it is. We're not doing nothing to it. You guys, look. Even this part in through here, I love that. It even looks really aged. Yep, we're doing nothing to it. All right, let me see this one. Yeah, we're just gonna throw coffee on this one. This one looks like this. It just needs a little extra something, something, right? And also it needs, let's just throw a little bit of whatever on this. That's on my brush, a little walnut stain. And we'll throw a little bit. Oh, you know what? Let's actually do a little corduroy on the edges here. I love adding brown to gray. I've discovered that lately and I just love it. Like, look at the top of that. I just used the uh, corduroy, brush corduroy, to the top of that. And that was gray up there. Look how cool that is. In fact, you know what? Instead of coffee, let's just add, let's just, to the gray part, just brush over it a little bit with this corduroy and not do coffee on this. Oh, I love it. Very, very cool. This just added the little bit of depth that we needed. All right, check this out now. Isn't that, look how much better that looks. Doesn't it? Fabulous, so I'm done with that one. Okay, this is the last one we have here. And I think this is a coffee one. Yep. Yeah, I think coffee is what need, what's going to be needed up here. And like I said, if I go back and I, once they dry, if I see anything that needs to be touched up a little bit, I'll just use my um, my Distress inks or oxide on them. Let that soak for just a second. These are all my, I mean, why this is so good. Let me show you my favorite color. So these are all the colors I love using. I love using brush corduroy. This is Distress Ink. Distress Ink Walnut Stain. So that you can go get these yourself. If Or you know which ones. If you like the style I'm doing, you can kind of be looking out for these. Especially if they're on clearance at uh, Hobby Lobby. Rusty Hinges Ink. Hopefully they have it in an oxide. I'm going to keep that out because I want to look that up. Uh, walnut Stain again, but in the oxide instead of the ink. So I have both of those in ink and oxide. I haven't used this today, but the peeled paint, it's like an olive green. It's really good. This right here, I told you, looks like the like when things oxidize, like a piece of metal, and you see like that rust, and then you see like that tealish green color. This. So add this with like um, rusty hinges, this, and walnut stain or, or um, vintage photo. You'll get like a good rusty look. I love the aged mahogany and this is the oxide um, of course vintage photo everybody uses this oxide and the um, ink I have both I love them both I have them both but I don't have them both out right now I only have the um, oxide out anyway old paper 
these are good when you, old paper and um, antique linen. These are good when you just need to add a little bit of that yellowness to the paper so it's not pure white. But you can add these as a base and then maybe add a little vintage photo over that, over the over, intermix it in there. So these are really nice to have too. So let's let this drip. And I like that. So look. See how much better that looks? So we'll let these all dry on my floor. And I'll take pictures of them so at the end of a video, you guys can see how they turned out completely. But you can see how the change was made just instantly by um, adding some of these really, really nice um, inks or oxides and the coffee. Um, I used the dark mixture of the coffee. And I always label the bottles like I did D. The other one has M for medium. So, um, that's it. Just wanted to show you guys that so that you can take some of your prints, especially the ones that like, they look good, but you're like, even the ones that are horrible, you can change them. And, um, I don't think any of them are ever horrible, but <laughs> if you're like, I don't like this, then you can take your coffee and your oxides and take them to the next level. Um, or if you have ones that are just like, oh, I like it, but, and then just do what I just did and you can just improve your jelly your jelly prints okay you guys that is it um if you haven't subscribed to my channel i'd love for you to do so if you can give this video a thumbs up any comments or questions below come visit me on facebook and instagram come join our group it's called our magical little place um also uh on sundays and you can come there it doesn't matter if you're a crafter or mixed media artist whatever you do just come visit us everybody's welcome um, just to give you guys something to look at. Um, and also on Sundays, um, I have a, I go live on Sundays. Um, I'm usually doing something, um, with, you know, with mixed media and my, you know, and my art journals or my altered books, um, and jelly printing and all of that, um, on Sundays, but you can be working on whatever you want to work on. And it's like a little party. Everyone's talking, having fun. And also, um, there's giveaways. So, um, that's it, you guys. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!